Okay, another streamer, Kelly. We had the uh, Puff Daddy or the TNA and the Zoo Cougar. I mean, you, you can't have that, <laughs> that many crazy names left. This one's the stacked blonde. I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> Just tie the thing, will you? <laughs> this, was, this fly was a takeoff of my hero Joe Brooks fly. Actually, it wasn't his fly, but he popularized it, the blonde. Blonde, fly. absolutely. And I wanted that fly with a little more bulk to it, and I stacked three hairs, so the stacked blonde. All right, makes sense. And it's a mostly deer hair, and I'm going to take this bucktail, and I do this in white, yellow, and chartreuse. But yellow has accounted for probably the highest number of big fish. And this, the, the thing about this is if you're gonna fish a long time, a long day, it, it, this fly, when you cast it, it jettisons its water very quickly. So it's not heavy like my right. cougar or the kiwi or yeah. something that holds a lot of water. This one's almost like casting a leader, so it's really nice. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna tie this first clump in. And you see how long this fly is. Right. It's already almost five inches long just from the first piece and it's in the back here and I'm not going to worry too much about this taper I am going to taper it off just a little bit here and tie it in and I'm going to pinch it down a little bit I haven't really started to cinch it down yet I'm just doing progressively tighter wraps as I go notice you got a different hook there yeah it's a keel hook keel it's hook. Uh, the keel hooks uh, that's that's why it's a stack uh, and I'm just going back over that a little bit just just tighten it up a little bit the stacks it allows this is going to allow me to put uh, multiple stacks in here to build the, the width of the imitation the fly and, uh, what, and so what brand of hook is it it's a mustad oh yeah uh, okay yeah I remember that hook. it's it's an old old hook actually they quit making the regular keels and went to, just to the stainless now I'm just going to put a the second stack will be the second of three. Well, there's there's four total. This is the second one. And with this one, I've got I trim that at a little angle, just because it's so it lays in there. And then I, what I do is I pull the thread off to the side, and then I do a a real loose wrap here, one, two, and then I push that hair up through there and tighten it down. And I'm going to take that right to the base of the bend there come back up and you can see I'm going to pull that tight so now I've got my second stack it's right in the middle mm -hmm. and then I'm going to split this so it comes back so there's the second one and I'm advancing this thread down to the bottom and I'll take another and it, you're looking for the longest possible hair on the on these tails. I mean, they don't all have really, really long hair. Uh, but you're just, just digging around trying to find the, the longest possible hair on there. And this one's been used up pretty well. I've been cutting on it. And you clean that same thing you do with deer hair when you're spinning it. Clean out the short hairs. You're going to clean out. So now I'm going to turn this. That's the beauty of the rotary. Right. I'm going to turn this upside down. And I like to have a pretty broad head on these. I cut this on a reverse angle so the shortest hairs are the, on the bottom and the longest ones are closest to the eye. So I get a nice, comp you know, it's non-compressible hair, so you got to, it's not, not hollow hair. So I've got to, I'm working forward, just tightening those down, trim those little excess hairs out of there. And we've still got a lot to do here as far as building this head. but nice and tight so it's really compressed here using right. a good broad using brand. gx tube good broad yep and i've got a couple little strays there now this is the fourth one this stack is more to just tidy up this stuff it has really no bearing the original ones i did i didn't do this to but this one's just a little bit of fluff i mean it is a blonde by the way needs a little fluff but this one just goes kind of through here to, to kind of make the, it does two things one it makes the head broader and you know minnows have got a pretty broad head and I'm doing the same thing with the reverse this one's a little harder to get your fingers around because of the keel but I'm separating that hair to go around this just to kind of there we go and I'm just gonna 
bring this down right to the end, right to the eye. Then I'm just going to take this back. And I'm starting to get, so that just kind of cleaned yeah. up, added a little bit. Yep. Little bit now I'm going to take a couple of marabou, plumes of marabou, longest ones I can find, same color. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to lay those right dead in the middle on the top. Now I've got two, three secure wraps. And I just make sure that everything's right on the top and that the feathers are not rolled in any way. And you notice I, I held that with my left hand, the marabou, mm -hmm. and then I adjusted it with my, while well, holding tension onto this feather, I can kind of shift them back and forth right. wherever I want. And so then I'm just going to go forward halfway. I'm not going to take those all the way to the eye because I want to create a taper there. And so now I'm just going to, now it's just a matter of a buildup. I'm just going to keep adding thread here, smooth. Nice smooth wraps, trying to get a nice clean, even taper to this. And that's the beauty of this flat thread, is I get a nice smooth. Yeah. And I'm going to whip this down. Okay. And then I'll cut this off. And when I was in Michigan, this this fish or this fly accounted for more really big fish, say 25 and above, than all my other flies for me personally. Including uh, the cougar. Including the cougar. This one, I fished this fly as long as uh, I've done it as big as seven inches long.